Hello, hello. Okay. Let's wait a few more minutes. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Great. Good. How are you? Nice to see you. Good. Long time no see, yes. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> True. But I have seen some of you in the meantime. So, hey, yeah. Yelda. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> hey, Yelda. Cool, you made it. Yeah, the other meetup that I hello. got to got moved. So, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. cool. How was here? Amazing. So, let me make a, a little intro in a minute. I, I see there are still more people coming in. And feel free also to leave the camera on. Uh, I think it would be nice to see each other but i personally always appreciate it very much if listeners yeah. or at least some of them need their cameras on so but if you feel like you're talking to yourself all the time then how is how is your experience with jitsi and these big uh, bigger calls is it working nicely now yeah I, I think so i mean last time worked pretty well right so yeah, let's see if not, we can make people turning off the camera again. <laughs> so, Hi guys, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay, With great. Us. Yes. <laughs> ah, how you? Hi. How are you? <laughs> we hear you. Nice living room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks so, like yeah. a proper home office. <laughs> I would say um, still more people coming. Yeah, but someone has to, I, I mean, keep the camera on, uh, but the microphone off <laughs> okay. would be a great uh, compromise. Yes, perfect, thanks. So I would say, um, let's start. Do you yeah, think? We have 22 participants on Meetup, so I think we'll probably yeah. complete, I'd say. Cool. So yeah, first of all, uh, I'm welcoming everyone on this Monday late afternoon. Um, it's nice to see also so many new faces here in our Appunet Insights. Uh, first of all, I am Paula. I'm uh, working on the business development side for APUNET and uh, yeah, quickly to APUNET. Uh, APUNET is a multidisciplinary network of developers, a designer and strategists with a subunit aid that focuses on Web3 applications and infrastructure. Um, yeah, our mission is to make new digital realities accessible for everyone and make everyone benefit of it. Uh, we recently started the APNet Insights, where we invite people from our extended network to discuss actual topics and ideas to gather all synergies and inspirations. And uh, yeah, previous one was, for example, about NFTs and the music industries, where we were talking about opportunities uh, to make the music industry a fairer place for artists and organizers, which was also embedded in our recent project, uh, Eventivize. And yeah, where a lot was um, going on uh, this month. Check it out, eventivice.co. And yeah, back to today. I am especially and warmly um, welcoming um, Shepnam today, who will give an intro to um, token engineering and the brilliant token engineering community and the um, TE comments. Uh, I see there are also some people from their inside here. Welcome. 
Uh, yeah, quickly to Shabnam. She's a computer scientist and a researcher. She worked in applied research for Siemens for over 10 years before she was starting Freelio in 2016 as its founding member. Um, also, to mention is that she's one of the founding members of the German Blockchain Association, the Bundesblock, and she is curating a community sourced crowdfunded book, The Hitchhiker's Guide to Token Engineering. Um, and is recently also working on a game-based framework, framework called Electric Circus, about which we will hear a bit more later. So these are just a very few of the many things that she's doing, because there's many, many more. <laughs> and yeah, just quickly, how we did, uh, get together here today is actually uh, what was connecting Shepnam and me in our um, conversations the last times we were talking. And uh, it was especially about ga gamified uh, no uh, knowledge creation within the community and gamified education. And yeah, we were talking about these two disciplines and um, the knowledge gain that comes with co-learning and co-creating. And this made us start opening up um, the conversation um, to the network today, to you. Yeah, and uh, now I would hand over the mic uh, to Shepnam and I would say, um, let's stay here um, after Shepnam's little uh, uh, presentation to make a, a Q and A or open conversation, whatever it becomes out of that. Yeah, super cool. So first of all, I'm super excited uh, about, uh, you know, all of this uh, knowledge co-creation and co-learning opportunities, uh, especially that you guys come up with, because this is exactly what we need in token engineering, this hyper a multi-dimensional or transdisciplinary um, um, era area that has opened up. Um, I will go into that a bit. Let me share my screen. And actually, I shifted a bit to really explain why we need uh, um, all of the cool proposals. And uh, two of them at the end, uh, I will intro and two more about knowledge co-creation. This is also something with the token engineering community. We started around April uh, last year. It coincided somehow with, um, how do you call it, with COVID and lockdowns. And uh, basically, this is where we also had time to reflect what is it that we most, mostly are missing, right? And when it comes to token engineering, we're missing token engineers. <laughs> and uh, in this crazy, um, fast moving um, industry, we can call it, but at the same time, it's a field we are, it is emerging, we are researching, we are co-developing. Now I'm sharing full screen. That's why I would like to take time to actually you know, it's the first time that I present <laughs> token engineering comments and what we've been up to, um, the, the, the hatch, what that even means and uh, how the proposals are going to actually create this public good of the token engineering uh, comments. And uh, there are some super fast uh, developments in the token engineering comments um, in, yeah, we have to call it project. It's also the first field deployment of common stack. Uh, I don't know how many of you know common stack, but that is basically the goal to actually create those uh, open source libraries, frameworks, bound them together so that people really can hatch their comments based on safe token engineered libraries, uh, you know, um, patterns, anything that we can reuse. And this is so nicely self-referential. Like <laughs> if you love fractals like me, uh, you will want to be involved and uh, also we, we need you. So yes, I will talk about yeah, public goods. What is token engineering? What is token engineering comments? And then basically from my point of view, all of this, uh, of course, is a complex adaptive system. Uh, but from my point of view, the, the core value 
creation or the dynamo or the main flywheel that will keep running is basically the, the value that these proposals uh, are brought in uh, to be funded for and from token engineers. And basically our collective potential, what we can co-create for the reuse for our common good. Now, listen, I'm a computer scientist <laughs> and uh, most of my time I worked for multinational for-profit corporation like Siemens. And I was happy like a chum, uh, having my big research budget and so on and so forth. And, uh, you know, I'm one of those late bloomers that only around 2016, I got into all of the rabbit holes. And the first thing I still had to look it up for this call was, what is a public good? And the funny thing is I look it up on the perfect example of a public good, which is Wikipedia, right? Uh, in our um, domain or, you know, in our corner, uh, open source, uh, software, smart contracts that are audited, um, models and simulations of uh, token engineering or patterns of token model and crypto economics patterns that are tested uh, and so on and so forth. All of that open source is, of course, a, a public good. And then the next thing um, is the common good, like the public good, this open source um, co-creation. It is non-excludable and non-rivalrous. Uh, you know, knowledge doesn't get uh, less when you share it. Uh, open source projects aren't diminished in value if they are forked and basically built upon and, and reused. Mm, but there is something more, and that is also very um, speaking to the token engineer's heart, <clears throat> is about the outcomes. Right, um, outcomes, what you, what we are funding, what we are building, that it really is for the common good, meaning that the things that we uh, develop, create uh, through those proposals, funded proposals, are beneficial for all or most members of a community. And these are the token engineers and token engineering teams, um, you know, the, the projects and networks they live in they develop for all of those people are our community. And token engineering is, again, uh, you know, uh, my strong opinion, uh, but it uh, builds on basically uh, all of the insights of the past years and also publications uh, like the Crypto Economics Foundation paper of Sherman and Zargam uh, November last year, or. 2019. It really is a new transdisciplinary art of doing science and engineering. Um, one big issue is um, if we want to keep this diversity, uh, this multidisciplinarity and transdisciplinary knowledge, because we need to combine knowledge from all of those disciplines with respect to allocation of resources. Uh, and I will go uh, in some details into, into those disciplines as well. But we need insights from all of those disciplines, not all of the disciplines themselves, but insights that revolve around this um, uh, resource allocation. Now, the problem with, <laughs> with academia, uh, um, or, or you know, as everything currently is being built, is because of the skewed incentives, and this is what token engineers deal with, uh, incentive mechanism design, we know that the currently how the academia is set up, like the incentives you get uh, for publication in certain areas, uh, you get zero credits for publishing uh, cross-disciplinary, multidisciplinary, because there aren't any renowned uh, conferences, etc. So we know if we would leave this to the academia to sort itself out, uh, it would just dissolve or remain in, in the silos in academia that we know exist. And uh, that's why token engineering, the community, needs to come together and create a commons that can 
uh, create these new uh, types of knowledge, co-creation, sharing, dissemination, but also figuring out how are we going to actually do R&D uh, and live deployments <laughs> uh, of these incentive mechanisms uh, and so on that we are engineering, uh, modeling, simulating with computer added design tools and basically deploying on test nets, do formal verification and so on, what have you, and finally deploy on a world computer. Um, that's <laughs> that's a hell uh, lot of uh, a challenge, and that's why certain types of people are drawn to this challenge, and that's why again it makes it super fun to actually uh, hang out even in our Discord. So um, please do uh, feel welcome um, from whatever background you are. And I know most of you might still think, oh, this is this engineering heavy uh, field, uh, which was true most of the time. You know, if you think about uh, your prototype, uh, stereotype token engineer, you know, you have maybe uh, Vitalik, Gavin Wood, who were basically on the sides of computer science and economics, game theory, uh, quite engineering heavy, math heavy. Then we have Trent, uh, who basically, uh, of Ocean Protocol now, basically is absolutely coming from AI, optimization, evolutionary algorithms, uh, and industrial and systems engineering. We have Zargam, who is in the systems engineering domain, um, but also in operations, research, management, science, like he's the cyberneticist at heart. Um, and also that's why quite active, uh, also bringing in political science, governance, etc. So he was the first who was opening up <laughs> this, uh, this field uh, of engineering heavy to the social sciences, to the, to the um, organizational sciences, decision science, etc. And, um, and of course, Sherman, who basically, uh, I would say, you know, uh, coined this flower, a crypto economics flower, basically also seeing, wait a second, uh, you know, it's about incentive mechanism design. You, we are creating token economies. They uh, that comes from political science, governance, um, economics, game theory. It's about nudging, psychology, decision science. Uh, and so on, everything is basically in there. And, and I'm a computer scientist, right? <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into. Of course, I was all geeking out uh, on the engineering heavy sites. Um, I left Siemens as a senior key expert for cyber physical systems. So this was really the best uh, playing field I could imagine and um you know never ever looked back um but there was one thing that always <laughs> you know uh kind of disturbed me almost because all of this economics and game theory rational agents like these economic models are so gone wrong or rogue or beyond not being useful they're really harmful we have financial engineering, it has a very bad connotation. We have social engineering, it has a bad connotation. If you want to look positively upon it, you might call it nudging, but it's about figuring out how to manipulate humans. <laughs> and if you do that, uh, uh, you know, with smart contracts, uh, tokenized incentive uh, systems deployed globally, you can wreak, wreak havoc. That's why I was both relieved when I actually met people from philosophy, law, ethics. And uh, just this October, we had this deep dive into that rabbit hole. <laughs> uh, and basically we came out of it covering uh, all of these uh, three petals, there's philosophy, ethics, political science, governance, psychology, and decision science in the new channel called uh, Token Engineering Philosophy. Um, so feel, really welcome. Uh, 
I don't think we're missing any background. And uh, it's not just engineering heavy uh, on the one side. And on the other side, all of these rather, you know, uh, social sciences uh, are also in the 21st century turning more computational. So what we are basically uh, wrapping our heads around, uh, creating our tooling, we call it token engineering, but it's really information engineering in the 21st century or for 2021. Uh, here are some <clears throat> interesting links you can go into, like we are as token engineers becoming or are already algorithmic policy makers. We can come up with the best incentive mechanism design, but and deploy that uh, onto people, but are we legitimate? Are we legit to do so? And the most fun part, uh, I'm sure some of you will enjoy it equally is actually psychology and decision science. You know, you can deploy your token, but uh, it's really about uh, how people react and why their environment, their motivations, uh, all of the nine uh, yards. Um, and uh, there are really, really interesting insights to be had uh, when, you, when we look into this as well. Again, uh, trying to figure out what all of these uh, disciplines bring onto the table with respect to resource allocation. Okay, then the next thing, basically explaining the commons, uh, the potential public good, uh, we'll get into that more, the token engineering, the discipline. Now, who is or <laughs> what kind of people are in the token engineering community? And it's funny, you know, you remember most of 2017, everyone gets a token and basically you're flying uh, uh, by the, uh, I don't know, the tip of our pants, basically. Um, during that time, actually, all of these, you know, polymaths put their heads together and basically said, look, actually, we need something like token engineering. Um, and um, yeah, in June, November, um, actually in June, the energy um, domains event horizon, uh, one of the bigger energy and blockchain uh, events back then was also, I think, one of the first events to actually invite Trent to talk about token engineering. And in November, uh, he also published, you know, he's looking back to the past months when he, uh, he coined token engineering and all of the um resonance that he got and really this is how basically the token engineering community came together um we had in august october 2009 like the token engineering global gathering the first hackathon <clears throat> and for me personally being involved in a uh, decentralized energy projects and really you know uh, i didn't uh, go into regulations with the blockchain, uh, German Blockchain Association, not in vain. I was really into, we're going to get these protocols out there. Regulation was hard, but in 2019, what I also uh, realized was getting really, really good developers, um, designers, business developers to actually think in token engineering terms is super hard and we don't have enough people. So that, with that in the back of our heads, we went into 2020. And uh, while we, the token engineering community, like this, this rather geekish uh, part of it, were actually into, okay, we need to, you know, get uh, more, um, more materials for knowledge, uh, management, dissemination. Um, we need to get it together and get it out there. We need people to actually be able to uh, learn this, um, you know, complex adaptive dynamic learning <laughs> environment as well. And the tools, like no one could uh, get along with CAD, CAD, which is one of the main tools and so on and so forth for computer added design. So that was, um, Basically, uh, while most of 2020s from June on, everyone was, uh, you know, some of the token engineering people or uh, who would be token engineers developers uh, were actually fighting this really <laughs> scary 
uh, battle of DeFi, uh, some of us uh, uh, went really into how are we going to create um, our knowledge uh, resources and be um, um, Angela created the Token Engineering Academy. I started creating the book and basically the course ecosystem value flows. Uh, all of that happened during that time in a parallel universe <laughs> uh, outside of DeFi. So, and uh, at the end, I will come back to those insights uh, from the course and the academy and what else we need to make it really uh, useful and why I'm so excited about all of these educational insights that a unit also has. Um, I know it's uh, <laughs> it's a bit uh, um, tough maybe that I'm uh, slamming all of this information, but this is the last one. I just want you to have uh, one more insight, like what is it what we're really talking about, uh, token engineering in practice, what is that? Uh, I think the main mm, the main tool that we have, which is super exciting, is computer added design. We had CAD CAD computer um, complex adaptive dynamics computer added design uh, by Block Science, which then got uh, open source through Common Stack in 2019, and ever since we had all of these developments, and there is now um, you know. Uh, foundations or, or bootcamp courses, etc. cetera. Um, all of that developed. And just recently we have our second tool. Uh, of course there are more tools, but uh, you know, <laughs> these are the ones I'm curating only or which I'm into. Um, and we should have more tools and then frameworks through Token Engineering Commons. But the second one is uh, Token Spice. Uh, uh, of ocean protocol trends used it to actually really um, stress test uh, their ocean protocol, which is a purely agent based uh, model. And basically in CAD CAD, you can also combine the system dynamics, which translate to macroeconomic or, or big picture or system design, system dynamics that we can design. And then one can couple this with an agent-based model, modeling how different agents with different uh, behavioral um, models and policies interact with that system and what uh, dynamics emerge from that uh, complex adaptive uh, system. And of course, uh, all of this is Python. Uh, based, both of these tools, which is great because we can really close the pipeline of this uh, framework for modeling and simulation by connecting them at the very least to real-time data we get from these um, you know, test networks or deployed systems, uh, anything we can get our hands on from the blockchain uh, or Ethereum. Um, data, data query tools, um, et cetera. So this is a super exciting area and that would be enough <laughs> to get, uh, you know, my former geek self going and actually it did. But the other part, understanding it that fully uh, is what really gets me going and what really motivates me among all of this, <laughs> everything else that, that is happening uh, with the project and so on, we're involved in that we really need to get this um, current stage of this diverse transdisciplinary knowledge that we do have. We need to get this uh, context in a way applicable for the computer added design that our tools can um, deal with. But um, the, the mindset of the modeler, or if you will, the entire team's mindset need to change quite a lot. Um, you know, it's not like uh, you are the founding team and uh, you have um, econ slash game theory uh, geek and you have a comp sci crypto geek and you're fine, but we really want to go to path and must 
go the path of decentralization, uh, also due to regulatory um, uh, rails. That is where we actually need to enable the entire organization, which is going to be decentralized. Uh, every participant, you know, we can't call them users anymore. Every participant who takes part in the token economy actually coming from these different, uh, hey, in the oh. <laughs> these different, um, uh, coming from these different backgrounds, uh, all of them need to make decisions in this decentralized organizations. And we need to be able to align all of us according to some organizing or ordering principles uh, to actually, you know, simulate, model, deploy, develop, uh, and iterate uh, this token economy or token network. And all we can hope for, and this is, you know, uh, where the mathematicians and the engineers' realism comes in, all we can hope for is to be less wrong over time, as quickly as uh, as our tools and, and our economy that we're co-designing with all participants enables us. Of course, this is the vision. Now, um, the token engineering commons um, shall enable that vision, right? Um, and again, because uh, we never make things uh, simple or linear, uh, of course, this is a self-referential uh, field trial, as I mentioned, of common stack. So the token engineering commons will be the first uh, commons hatched using uh, the, the open source uh, frameworks libraries uh, that common stack built with token engineering knowledge and insight. So um, this is literal dog footing uh, 101 uh, from the booklet. And uh, the token engineering commons is launched by this trusted seed, which is a concept in common stack. And the trusted seed of token engineering commons uh, is um, made up of a critical mass of token engineers uh, and decentralized governance and commons management experts. Uh, experts in quotation marks because we don't like that <laughs> uh, much. Uh, again, you know, um, expert is a very uh, non-dynamic term, it seems. We are perpetual learners. <laughs> um, so, and the Token Engineering Commons mission is to gather and steward uh, the efficient distribution of funds to projects in this emerging field of token engineering to encourage the robust and ethical design of tokenized infrastructures. So these are links. Uh, we can go to them just to let you see where, what are the forums, where you find information. Um, or you can go through them by yourself and feel free to reach out to any one of us uh, directly to me or in token engineering comments discord. Uh, use the forum to ask your questions and that's great. Um, but as you see, we need all of the crypto economics uh, flower involved already in the hatching of the token entering comments. <clears throat> so, and that uh, brought us to something that was new to me. Again, you know, imagine me of the engineering heavy side and all of this uh, uh, humanities, social sciences part, political science, and so on and so forth. Uh, was news to me as well, like in this uh, beauty, that was really news to me. And uh, I learned a lot about, uh, um, yeah, about commons, how actually token engineering uh, can enable uh, this, but also why we again need the entirety of the crypto economics flower and not just the engineering a heavy side of it when we talk about token engineering <clears throat> teams or the project. Um, and the comments is neither the resource, you know, whether this funding or the, the reusable 
frameworks we create, nor the community gathered around it, nor the protocols for its stewardship, but the dynamic interactions of all three. And this is, you know, you can look into token engineering comments. And when I actually prepared this, um, it was funny. This I copy pasted actually from another project and the same pattern I see yet in another project as well. So again, in my book, <laughs> which is not my book, but this crowdsource crowdfunded book, A Hitchhiker's Guide to Token Engineering, that uh, is a typical uh, pattern that you can see uh, funding something that will continually add value to the token economy. Um, that is a pattern. And the crypto economics, um, you know, the primitive, if you will, is the logic how you would distribute that. And in token engineering commons, uh, we distribute that uh, or we manage all of that um, with the augmented bonding curve slash uh, conviction voting policies or primitives. Okay, and basically this whole uh, can already enable a community first approach where um, the ecosystem funds that are being um, going to be, um, you know, collected through the bonding curve um, and the contributions of the community pre and post hatch are actually accounted for transparently and the whole distribution going to the proposals that are going to create value for the commons or are going to become the public good of the commons. That um, is basically a nice pattern that uh, we definitely see even in DeFi protocols, <laughs> but uh, there it's more like uh, it's not an ecosystem product, but the yield uh, basically. Um, anyways, it's a financial engineering uh, thingy. Um, but as you see, this is way more, this is a community first incentive uh, uh, mechanism pattern uh, that we see recurring in other projects as well, which is great. So, um, and here I have some more links like now before the hatch, uh, how do people join and contribute? Uh, and when they do, how do they earn a token engineering comments? tokens, so tech tokens, and we have some memes to make fun of those uh, tech tokens. Uh, <laughs> um, um, but that is basically, uh, you can participate in the hatch, uh, of course, but not only you can actually contribute uh, work to the core mission of the token engineering comments, which is that this entire deployment phase, uh, by now actually contributing to the working groups, but also later on, of course, um, um, to the entire operations and so on. But this would be only the, the answer to the question how you can accrue tokens, right? And the one thing that, uh, you know, we, we push every token engineer and every token engineering project including us to think beyond and further is how is the token going to accrue value and that's an addition you know how does the token accrue value there's a very recent nice article by outlier ventures uh, but that is still just touching upon the this fintech mechanistic you know you can stake and you can burn uh, the rather mechanistic solutions, of course, uh, you can prove uh, if people, once the people are in, that is actually going to help to stabilize value accrual or, or uh, make it more predictable uh, with respect to what is being mechanically engineered. However, um, this core, you know, this community first aspect that we actually know exist that hasn't yet made into mainstream, uh, you know, uh, playbooks. Um, however, we're really showing uh, with the token entering commons hatch how self-referential uh, this particular hatch is, 
but also how both sides can happen simultaneously. And of course, as I mentioned, um, value, uh, you know, this is something that the polymaths just throw at you. Value is intersubjective. Go figure out what that means <laughs> in a tweet. Uh, but uh, these are, these are the, let me put it that way, newest insights that we're getting that actually this whole human layer, this whole social layer and the environments in which those social beings interact actually does have an effect even before they get to interact with the token smart contract after which we can you know we have our engineering handle on but beyond before that uh, it is quite still a big and huge uh, human action space uh, and in our small case of token engineering commons uh, we can see this is really the community and the proposals so uh, I can say there are, you know, three flywheels of token engineering commons. Um, the working groups, which take care of the operations, the trusted seeds are like curators and hatchers are like funders. Um, you know, that needs to work out. You know, that is what gives this whole thing its stability once it started turning. Um, and the project proposals are basically um, uh, which creates this this angular momentum. Um, yes, and again, uh, if you want to contribute or look into the working groups, currently are this entire tech uh, and implementation side, uh, augmented bonding curve, conviction voting just purely software specification, implementation, testing, modeling, hatch parameters, and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, it's an entire, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, multiple sessions in and on themselves, but also soft governance, uh, which basically what is the cultural build one needs to actually run such a machine as a community? The legal side of it, uh, it's not off the table. Um, that is really good that, uh, that we're currently going through, through uh, all of those hoops and actually make it um, you know, a standard way coming out of it that can be reused. Conflict management, this is something that every DAO forgot about and everyone has burned themselves, even the best you know, the best projects out there have burned themselves because they didn't think they could ever run into conflicts, meaning, you know, even sometimes people don't even know that they have conflicts. So this whole communication part didn't just go away just because we had smart contracts. Imagine this whole human action layer is still there. And uh, again, the biggest insights for me was we are also in token engineering commons getting a handle on that we are making that also handleable for other token engineers and their projects they're working on which is a great great big win for uh, for all of us involved in the space and then comms and community of course and the project proposals are still quite few and i don't know if i have to go and explain this one uh, but as you can see, I am, so my subjective interpretation is that the public goods of this token engineering commons that I will, you know, go after uh, and fund and cheer for and, and say we need this are these uh, reusable open source frameworks, of course, best practices, but not just putting them out there, but making those practices and standards if you get there available to the practitioners uh, you know even if they're fighting the hard battle and building in DeFi, which sucks <laughs> take it from andre um, yes and basically all of these projects uh, and we need more of those we can get more of this we have a lot of content that needs to be created in different formats to be able actually be usable for all of those different token engineers. You know, we have some people who are fresh from academia who are doing their PhD, but again, we have people in projects day to day, uh, you know, uh, living at the edge, 
uh, and and looking into abyss every day they push a commit mm, so this is where where we're at and we don't want to leave anyone behind we really want to create this knowledge and disseminate it to everyone who needs it, who can add to this knowledge, uh, improve it and uh, share with others. And our goal is to support token engineers and of course their projects, um, and this, these tokenized infrastructures that they're building such that those can be created with robust and ethical design. It's super, it became really uh, dear to my heart. And that's why, uh, you know, of all of the possible proposals, and they're really, really good ones uh, in the pipeline, my personal favorite ones are the knowledge products. Um, you know, how can we bring interdisciplinary people? You know, some people really, they come from, mm, they, they could be working for NASA, systems engineers, you know, rocket science. Uh, and they, they kind of pick up on something because they are interested in this whole political science or governance side, like the other, the other side. And those types are finding their way to token engineering community, to the Discord. And we want to enable them to be, you know, hit the ground running as fast as possible without fearing this transdisciplinary uh, flower, but actually getting excited because they exactly know what they need. Uh, that's one side. The other side is actually those teams out there. Um, they need not just one guy who knows everything. It's not doable, <laughs> uh, but entire teams. Um, and if you will, it's really this old, very old, um, drama almost of bringing business and tech together. Again, you see this both sides uh, uh, of the of the crypto economics flower you can interpret from, okay, this is the business side, this is the tech side. And how do we enable teams uh, with those backgrounds actually speak the common language that they need to run a decentralized autonomous organization? or uh, create protocols on which other people uh, run their decentralized apps. So that's super, super exciting. Um, and um, especially for these groups, these knowledge products will be crucial. And with those, basically we will create this, uh, the first uh, energy input into actually making things run. And we already know with the Token Engineering Academy and the courses that we gave, um, we already know that people really, really like it. Uh, the first um, one of the community members, Sean, uh, who was in the second cohort of this Ecosystem Value Flows course in the Token Engineering Academy, he literally uh, finished the course and he started uh, almost immediately token engineering commons lab uh, where he literally teaches everyone what he just learned because he is this you know uh, multidisciplinary entrepreneurial type uh, he's a data scientist he knows his systems and so on and so forth and the path on pipeline anyways so he started uh, to create tech lab uh, contents from live coding to actually uh, explaining the basics of, of cat cat or panda and uh, one of those proposals I'm really excited about is, is his proposal of actually making this tech lab into a, um, yeah, or, or funding the production team in a sense to actually come up with useful, uh, super practical hands-on sessions for people to dive uh, right into. Uh, and that's super interesting. The Token Engineering Academy uh, Angela, uh, she's amazing. She uh, literally created uh, two or three more courses or potential courses um, in the past months. And with those, uh, she definitely, uh, hopefully will make a proposal. Um, then this electric circus proposals, I would like to talk about a little bit if we have time. If not, I find another time or you just reach out if you're interested. 
This is basically the ecosystem value flows course, which helps with meshing design thinking and systems thinking with the computer added design uh, phase. And um, what I've been always thinking about is it is great to have this course, you know, and if you do it right, it goes over three weeks. However, um, then the token engineers or these teams finish the project and they need to go out there and actually engage with their communities. And again, there's this huge translational gap. You know, we have the business and tech team together, but now they need to communicate with the communities uh, or their community. And that gap could be closed with such a nice web-based, game-based framework that we've been dreaming about <laughs> uh, with, the, with the duo who created Le Grand Jeu, um, Zarga Miskin, because CatCat is basically a um, differential games engine. So we have all of the components and to actually make this a game-based framework for co-creation of these ecosystem value flows, not just with business and tech, but actually with the community, the real participants, that would be top notch. Uh, I'll definitely try and bring this somehow into the third cohort, but making it a proper proposal with a development team behind, uh, with actual users. We have a super cool uh, scenario, it's called Impact Pirates. Uh, so we have a really cool potential um, uh, interested parties to to give it a try uh, and co-develop with us so that's uh, i'm i'm super excited about and i am also very much excited about the decade proposal uh, which we talk about next next monday right um and there it really fits so well like this notion of peer-to-peer -peer learning um through challenges or just get together and solve puzzles together, et cetera, that fits perfectly uh, to be basically to take all of this content that has been already created, you know, all of the three points above, <laughs> you know, we can take this content and with the help of the Kate and the team behind, we can actually create, um, uh, you know, a peer-to-peer -peer learnable versions of that content and that is actually in and on itself great you know for everyone but also after those courses when they're finished to really just you know case the um so to like like um study groups you know if we could get them through such a structured peer-to-peer -peer learning uh, um, framework that will be top notch and, you know, and there will be more proposals, but even for those four, I'm, I'm game and I would, you know, <laughs> I will, I will do a lot uh, because I know that those will make our lives easier when we're actually, you know, when I think of Electra Seed Fund, where I have to explain things to people, or I had to explain things to people from uh, energy domain smart microgrids, they have nothing to do with all of this, but I just <laughs> talked about for half hour, right? And, and those huge gaps can only be really bridged if we get more creative with how we are going to co-create knowledge and disseminate, share and disseminate knowledge in a way that scales. So this is uh, where I'm super excited about. And I am, I left you five minutes <laughs> for questions. I'm so bad, so sorry. It's not that I like talk, hearing myself talk, I hate it, but it's just dense content uh, as you see. Yeah, I think also it was necessary to, to hear all this and to see all this, my idea would be um, also to hear a bit more about the electric circus, um, to put it into um, next week as well. So to um, have the Kate and electric circus in, in one and then we can now, um, yeah, get a few questions. 
or comments for people? I know you have them. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to show or just jump in. Yeah. Don't be shy. I think people are still processing the information. So, but maybe a, a question from my side, like who of you is already, you know, actually not in token engineering, but um, is taking the leap or is already in the Discord, but quite new or is planning to come over or has already booked some CAD CAD courses and been through? Is there someone to raise a hand or someone who got interested enough to uh, ask a few questions or just. Hi, Sebnam. I'm Andrew. I'm here in the office with Gabriella. Andrew. <laughs> Hi, Andrew. <laughs> Go on. Uh, nothing. I'm just saying that I'm in the TE thing and uh, I'm doing the cat cat thing and uh, I'm raising my hand. That's all. Thank you for showing up. And Andrew is one of those people, who, you know, just uh, takes complexity and eats it for breakfast. <laughs> I love his strategy, but I'm not going to tell it to you. You have to have uh, have a coffee with him. <laughs> Yeah, hi, I'm Philip. Um, I am sort of on the edge of trying to get started with token engineering, but I'm still extremely confused, to be honest. Like, I went once to a CutCut workshop two years ago. Two years in, ago? Or, yeah, I'm not sure. Time flies like bananas, what it's called, you know. Um, so I don't. I, I think it was like during the East Berlin 2019. There was a workshop yeah. in CatCat, and it was so overwhelming that also I, I could not really follow. And ever since, I uh, don't find any good resources to get started. Oh, okay, you have to come come over. But uh, let me just share CatCat in token engineering context. Um, or it's also in the in the link, I think, but let me share it with you nonetheless in the chat. Because they are just links and they are new ones. Like we have this new course, which is really good if you, you know, I don't know what is your background programming or yeah, I'm a software developer, exactly. Perfect. So that's this this boot camp, CAD CAD, uh, you know. I know the difficulty being a programmer, uh, you know, having being used to uh, UML modeling and so on and so forth. This whole design thinking is, you know, we can deal with it, but the systems thinking really wants to have a mind shift from you and cat cat too. So um, that is the that is why it's not easy to jump in. But in those one and a half years, <laughs> finally uh, we have uh, really good resources, much better. Let me put it that way. They are going to be improved, um, but they are much, much better than before. And uh, yeah, we have these courses again. Um, if you are more inclined to also figure out basically coming from, OK, how am I going to apply this uh, within a project where, you know, the business side or the project side uh, comes to you with uh, ideas, what can be done, and you're like, okay, <laughs> where to put all of these assumptions, uh, you know, how to actually interact uh, with the business and community side, and then to think about their, um, yeah, those, all of these incentives and motivations that exist, and actually take that into uh, your uh, token model, which is all about incentive uh, design. And then depending on where you want to go next, you know, are you the one who's going to deploy this? 
then you're the perfect person to actually talk to smart contract developers, this whole security audit and so on and so forth. So we are, we know much better now what are the, the, the interfaces of people talking to each other and what kind of tools and language translation is needed in between. But uh, yeah, it's still new. Like the course is from December or November, that new. Okay, cool. Yeah, thanks for the information. I will check it out. Please. I also have a question that goes a bit in a similar direction. So to, let's say my observation, often our discussions are still very dominated by, let's say software engineering perspective or stuff like that. And it's really difficult to uh, get in all the other perspectives that were shown in this, this flower. So um, mm -hmm. what, what helped you there or what, which ways do you see is the most, most promising to, because on one hand, we always need to maybe sometimes simplify things or yeah. take out complexity to, to make things easier to, exp, uh, to explain. Um, which is then on the other end a bit difficult to have really a uh, yeah, discussion also with, with an outcome about the design. Exactly, like how do you get uh, down to uh, user stories when you start off with, oh, we're building a token economy, like, <laughs> um, and this is, uh, again, everything super fresh, like uh, I just laid out this whole ecosystem value flows course content in a way that when people go out of it and I'm testing it with two uh, uh, or, or yeah, putting it to test, uh, live test with two projects and um, it really brought some relief. Um, is basically how do you map all of this and then at the end you have to come up with you know what is the protocol we are developing or using what is the platform that still exists right and what are the apps <laughs> like these three dimensions and then uh, people need to sort themselves uh, what is it that we are building are we the the protocol and are the others able to actually just go ahead and use the protocol or do we have to create those ecosystem and community products Take Ocean Protocol, for example, it's version three, and they now actually have, say, they have product market fit. What they say is, we have the protocol cleared, okay? Uh, the token logic of it went through version one and two, and now we have cleared what is the product that we need to build such that this protocol becomes useful to, data owners and people who want to use data uh, because it's an entirely new uh, domain, right? So if you want, or if I may, I don't know, we just talk with Moritz a bit and if he gives me uh, maybe 15 minutes next time, I can show you this map, uh, you know, and then basically the idea where it still is lacking you know, you have mapped all of this, it's in Miro. All of the assumptions are in some documents or Notion or GitHub and so on and so forth. And it's still not this flow of information that we need to wire as well. And that's a new insight for me. Like we need common language or translation. We need to make that information flow within the organization that is not just modeling the token, but is going to deploy it. And then also we need to make those people who, who were used to call users uh, to make them real participants interacting with the protocol, with the product, uh, even developing products themselves. Uh, so that is still uh, open. And again, to, to close that ga gap, which is on one side knowledge and on the other side, again like this never-ending drama <laughs> between uh translation between business and technology in which things get uh, lost in translation always you know <laughs> from the beginnings of software engineering through cloud mobile social 
and never changed, uh, you know, uh, the SAP and Microsoft, everyone had that problem and it doesn't get easier if you create a complex uh, adaptive dynamic system that runs on a global uh, ledger and uh, manages millions worth uh, of uh, your economy's tokens. So that is one big area. And again, I'm super excited uh, about also what, what you have been building on and your experiences. I think uh, it's really great that we found uh, each other and that we also enable you to be, become real active partners uh, and community members in token engineering through these knowledge management or knowledge projects. That would be really good. So a lot of challenges we can put our hands on too. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Mar Hi. Hi, I'm Moritz. We talked to each other before, but uh, yeah, not seen yet. So thanks a lot. I think this is such an interesting project on total the space. Um, yeah, new way of uh, funding public goods. I think this is so interesting and really something that we need. So um, in our case, like with the Kate, we are, we are looking into yeah the public good of education and kind of what we can do there. Since I think a lot of people think that it's not, I mean, broken or like could be improved a lot. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited about, um, about, about this field, but in general, I think also research is so interesting. So there's so much possibilities what people can do. Um, yeah, but to my question, um, maybe to um, yeah, what, what you said before, like how the information flows. Um, so for me, it would be interesting also like what experience did you make um, with communication? Because I, I mean, I, I, I really like the Discord, and but it's, it seems still so complex. And I wonder um, if people, you know, like, have you be really to be engaged or are they like like a monthly things so or how do people know when knowledge changes and um, how to get updated on this so um yeah what 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 are the ways how 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 you make this communication work between all these different um uh, working groups and everything yeah yeah so that's the challenge um even if working groups are running really smoothly you know they have created this 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 dynamics that we want and they are open in token engineering comments, it's just it's really uh, you know uh, role models. Like we have uh, everything recorded, everything online. But then you're like, okay, we have an hour of recording. Like, <laughs> so how many of those can I watch, binge watch? And then this is how it started. And then be like, okay, now we have to tag. Uh, we have to actually create uh, indices of, of knowledge, bits, and so on and so forth. So I see the role of a knowledge creator in those networks and also in, in live token networks, literally people going and finding uh, these uh, nuggets uh, of, of knowledge, which uh, will be, you know, not changing a lot, like core protocol design, game theoretic design, uh, secure uh, security audits out, formally verified, uh, poured into smart contracts. Uh, they, they're not going to change much, right? But still, they need to be explained well and so on and so forth. And then there are things on the very human level, uh, which I had hoped for the longest time. <laughs> that they will just cancel themselves out, that everything is transparent. But um, a lot of what you hear practicing token engineers or, or people say is like, it's on a blockchain, God damn it, just look it up. But who can look, you know, look it up? Like only developers can do. So we need a lot of uh, information management and sharing tools there as well. And again, um, even just coming from the design thinking side, uh, all of that information that you create, uh, depending on where you put them, it's that information. That information is not good. Um, we need to put them in, in into format that can be really version controlled, but accessible by everyone. You know, not just people who can go through your GitHub issues and uh, your uh, uh, Zen Hub. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I call it the, the how do you call it? These these 
beautiful rugs that people weave and it looks beautiful but you can just look at it and no one knows how how is it happening and we have this issue like people coming in just active in one petal of the crypto economics for example psychology design science and they're new to everything like discord and so on and so forth some of them are gamers so <laughs> that uh, uh, elevates the issue a little bit but they're like okay like I cannot follow. I'm trying, but I cannot follow. And for that, we still need to uh, create a lot of uh, really practical knowledge management tools and snippets um, or wire things together we already have. Uh, but it's definitely different than what we know, like medium posts and so on and so forth that doesn't scale to public goods where we really want everyone involved and knowledgeable. So yeah, that's, that's why I'm super excited, Moritz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds really interesting. Also, we probably, it's so interesting also what experiences you made. Um, yeah, maybe we can go into this detail later or at yeah, another time, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Exactly. thanks. <laughs> Also for the proposal, like we can really list the issues and everyone will say, yes, I have that issue. And what we want is having those proposals uh, with people who can solve these issues or who are committed longer and solving those issues in different areas and get them to be active in token engineering community. And when the token engineers literally see those proposals, they go like, ah. Finally, when all of that is uh, funded, you know, <laughs> I don't have to fight so hard. That's uh, that's going to be the KPI, the the relief side of token engineers measured in decibel. <laughs> Amazing. Also looking forward to that. I would say um, let's call it a night. Uh, Thanks a lot for um, all the sources. Also wanted to ask if you share um, the doc, um, uh, the presentation with the links in it for people who are interested. And uh, yeah, also um, there's a question. Um, yeah, we will share um, the recording of this. Mm -hmm. The question is where? There were some asks on YouTube. I think Septimus, uh, who's asking, he is one of those heroes in Token Engineering Commons. Okay, so I will also... Um, he could help it you the... upload it and so on and so forth onto YouTube. I'm yeah, no, 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 we know how. Uh, to so, or share they... it widely. <laughs> yeah, 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 I just wonder where, where I share it <laughs> because there are so okay. many different uh, people now from different channels yeah. here, so... Uh, yeah, we will find a solution and uh, the same with the presentation if you like to share that. And yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to next week um, to extend this conversation. Um, thanks a lot also for everyone who stayed here and uh, who kept their attention so long and um, have a good night. See you next Monday. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.